All right, we're good to go. Um, in this video, I'll be doing day 10 of the 30 days of ML challenge. Uh, for today, we are looking at two lessons um, within the Intro to ML uh, course, uh, lesson five and lesson six. Uh, so lesson five is underfitting and overfitting, um, and lesson six is called random uh, forests. So without further ado, let's have a look at lesson five. So I am just going to skip past this. Uh, so you can read all of this in your own time. Uh, but essentially, I guess what I want to summarize or give you a sort of a brief explanation of what uh, the concept of underfitting overfitting is. Uh, so in machine learning, there's a concept called a bias uh, variance trade-off, uh, which is a play around with the, the concept of overfitting and underfitting as well. Uh, so bias is the difference between uh, or the error uh, between the predictive value and the actual value. So how uh, bad your model is or how far off your model is at making accurate predictions. Um, whereas variance, on the other hand, is the how consistent, how able is your, your model at making consist, uh, consistent value. Uh, so underfitting is when your model um, assumes or make uh, simplistic assumptions um, about your data uh, such that it does not, uh, it's not sophisticated enough or it's not, um, it's not smart enough to capture very uh, important features of your model. So for example, coming back to the predicting house prices example, it could be like your model always predicts 100,000. Uh, but is that what we want our model to do? Probably not, right? Uh, because we want our model to take into account um, the different features that describe a house. If a house has um, more bedrooms, we want to we want our model to be able to recognize that and give and take into account. Uh, but if you're predicting the same value all the time, that probably gives a, a very high bias, which is a very high um, error value um, because your yeah the value that your model is predicting and the actual value is very um, far off. The difference is very big. Um, so you probably want to um, avoid that. Uh, but on the flip side, we have something called overfitting, which is that your model is too close um, to the training data, um, which sounds um, good on, on the surface. Like you, you might ask why, what's the problem with um, feeding? What's, um, what's, what's so wrong about our model feeding so close with the training data? And the answer is um, if our model um, follows or hugs the training data too close, um, it's actually uh, detrimental to uh, detrimental when it comes time to make predictions uh, because in our data, especially in our training data, there's a lot of noise uh, in, our, um, in our training data. So if a model hugs too close to our training data, it does not uh, gener generalize well on the data that it has not seen before. Uh, so it will work well, very well on the, the data that you use to train it with. But when it comes to data that it has not seen before, and if there's a lot of noise in that training data, um, it will reflect in how the model will behave. Um, and so therefore, in that particular scenario, the bias would be very low, uh, but the variance would be uh, very high, uh, meaning the yeah you'll get very inconsistent uh, values pretty much. So that's just a, I, I'm probably not explaining like the right way. That's just a sort of a, a summary or like what I understand from the concept of underfitting versus overfitting. Feel free to definitely go like read through this. I'm just, uh, being mindful of time and uh, just want to keep this video concise uh, but essentially that's the sort of overall idea of, of um, what they're trying to explain here. Uh, this uh, particular diagram explains uh, explains it quite clearly I think. Uh, so as the tree depth uh, grows, um, the model gets more complex. So if a decision tree gets more and more complex, um, you'll uh, consider a lot of, uh, you'll consider more features compared to a shallow tree. Uh, so if you have uh, a tree that's too deep, um, it'll pick up on um, noise in the data because sometimes it'll consider a feature that is, um, it'll deem a feature as important, uh, but really in reality, it's just like a noise, you know, that's causing the, the sale price to be very high or very low. If you have a such a deep tree, you'll overfit the model. Whereas if you have a shallow tree, you're underfitting the model because you're only taking to, for example, one feature when you have um, 65 features to work with. If you're only considering one feature, that's probably not an accurate model, right? Uh, so machine learning is all about that. So when you're building machine, learn machine learning models, when you're learning machine learning, it's all about the uh, the trade-offs between underfitting and overfitting, and it's all about finding the right balance between um, overfitting and underfitting. All right, cool. Um, here we're gonna look at um, an example. So all of these are, we should be pretty familiar with uh, from the previous uh, video. So we looked at mean absolute error, uh, mean absolute error, which is and we also looked at the uh, difference between training set and validation set. Um, so here we are creating a function. So as we can see here with the define, 
so what this um, function is doing is essentially we are instantiating a model. Uh, we want to train the model to the training set. Uh, we want to predict, and then we want to calculate the mean absolute error, and we want to return it. So essentially, this is all the steps combined into one single function. Um, so we have instantiate, fit, predict, and then calculate the calculate the error, all jam packed into one single function, uh, which is very cool. So this function takes in one, two, three, four, five arguments. The first argument is called max leaf nodes, uh, which is a um, argument in uh, decision tree regressor, which uh, tells the which which tells the model how deep um, you want the the decision tree to go. So um, the more uh, leaf nodes, uh, the more overfitting you are to the data, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, if anything, just refer back to this uh, to this diagram. So as we can see here, we are increasing. So from we're increasing the number of uh, leaf nodes from five to five thousand, um, and we're calculating the mean um, absolute error. Um, so we want to obviously we want to pick uh, the the leaf nodes that give the um, smallest uh, mean absolute error. So from here, uh, the smallest mean absolute error is this. And so the reason why it's decreasing at first, but then increasing back up is because um, at the at the beginning, it's um, underfitting, and then it reaches its optimal, and then it will become um, overfitting. Yeah, so that's the idea, the main idea here. I hope that makes sense. Um, so here, uh, there's a key takeaway here, which uh, I'll go through with you guys. So overfitting is uh, capturing spurious uh, patterns that won't recur in the future, aka noise, uh, leading to less accurate predictions. Um, underfitting, on the other hand, it's uh, failing to uh, it's the failure to capture relevant patterns, um, again leading to less accurate predictions. So both are not good. Um, in uh, machine learning, it's all about finding the right balance. With that said, let's begin the exercise. Uh, let's just get set up, get our notebook set up for this for our exercise. Uh, so here we're using the same function again. Uh, so this function takes in the uh, number of leaf nodes as well as our training set um, and our validation set. Uh, so what this function does is it'll uh, instantiate a decision tree regressor depending on how many uh, leaf nodes uh, we've passed in into that function. And then we want to calculate the mean absolute error, which is what the final output will be um, of the function. Let me just go ahead and run that. Cool. Um, all right, so now we want to write a loop to find the idea, ideal tree size from candidate max leaf. So we want to write a loop. So for... Um, let me just call it leaf in candidate max leaf notes. Uh, we want to uh, print get mae leaf train x or x train train x uh, train x val x train y val y. I think that's it. Beautiful. Let me just go ahead and run that. Let's just comment this for now. And comment this for now. Cool. Let's just go ahead and run this. All right. So we want to pick the so the most optimal uh, number of leaf nodes is the one that gives us the lowest mean absolute error. So here the lowest is uh, this one here, twenty seven thousand two hundred and eighty two point five which is the fourth um, leaf nodes, which is one, two, three, four, which is 800. So that would be our best um, tree size uh, for this particular um, model. So let's just go ahead and check our answer. That is correct. Cool. Uh, so now we want to fit our model. So now that we uh, know that the most optimal number of um, leaf nodes is 100, we want to use uh, we want to use um, this piece of information when we are uh, building our model. Um, and so, what's the argument? Is it max leaf nodes? Uh, we want to set it to 800. And then we want to fit to the training data. Let me uncomment this. And then we want to also pass in the target variable. I think that's it. Do we do we need a random state? I don't think we need to. 
Your model isn't quite as accurate as expected. Did you fit on all the data? Oh, okay. So we want to just pass in the whole thing. Is that what they want? So just X and Y. All right, cool. All right, so that's it. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next uh, lesson, which is on random forest. So random forest is um, an ensemble method uh, which uses multiple decision trees um, when you're making predictions. So it's um, random forest is using a lot of parallel decision trees. So imagine you have like multiple decision tree models, and what that and what random forest uh, does is it'll aggregate all the predictions and um, yeah, take a, take the majority vote um, or take the average. So the reason why random forest is so good, or at least it's better than decision trees, is because it is less prone to um, overfitting because you're spreading across, you're spreading the the error across multiple decision trees rather than just relying on 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 one. Um, yeah, so that's what random forest is. Um, again, I am going to f skip. Should I skip? Uh, yeah, you can read through this in your own time, I guess. Uh, but essentially here, what we're doing differently is instead of using a decision tree model, we're using a different kind of model. Uh, this time we're using a random forest uh, regressor. Yeah, which just by itself, the fact that we use a different kind of model, it's already, uh, it's already managed to lower um, our error, uh, which is a big improvement, considering our error, error from the fall is like 250,000. Yep, I guess that's pretty much it. It's a short um, sort of lesson. Let's just begin the exercise. Um, yeah, shameless plug, make sure you go check out my article on on ensemble methods. So in that article, I contrast uh, the difference between um, bagging and boosting, aka the difference between uh, random forest and gradient boosting. Uh, both of those models use uh, decision tree. Um, and in the article, I also explain sort of briefly how decision trees work and how uh, random forest um, and, and gradient boosting further builds upon uh, decision trees. Yeah. I'll put a link in the description. Make sure you can check that out. It's very helpful. Um, all right, so let's just run the first cell and the first cell is just for setting up. Uh, while that's going, let's uh, look at step number one. So we want to use a random force. So we've already imported, they've already imported the, the model for us. Um, what we need to do is just instantiate it or define it. So we need to s define our random forest regressor and we're told to set a random state Oop. we're told to set a random state equal to one as well we want to fit our model rf model two uh, i'm so tempted to write train x because that's how i normally write it but here they're using train x instead of x train uh, train x as well as train y and then we want to calculate the mean absolute error. Mean absolute, I can't spell error. Uh, okay, so we want to use RF model to predict val x. And then we want to calculate the difference between our predictions as well as the actual val y. And then we want to print um, the MAE, the mean absolute error, this way. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, RF model, I forgot to do dot fit. All right, that should fix the mistake. Mean is not defined. Oops. More spelling mistake. Beautiful. Cool. So far, you have followed specific instructions at each step of the project. This helped learn uh, the key ideas in building your first model. Uh, but now we want to try things on our own. Yes, so I believe this is a setup for our um, final lesson uh, in this particular course, Intro to Machine Learning, uh, which I will cover in my next video. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. It'll mean a lot to me. Drop a like on this video as well. Uh, yeah, I really, really am having fun just trying to push out all these videos for you guys. But I hope you enjoy and gain some value out of uh, these videos. Um, yeah, subscribe to my channel. It'll mean a lot to me. Um, and yeah, keep watching. I uh, hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Peace.